What's going on everybody? It's Brady Joker here back with another movie review or should I say double review because today I'm going to be reviewing two movies Barbie and Oppenheimer. Now if you guys don't know what the Barbenheimer hype train is all about then you've been living under a rock for the last month and a half ish. Barbenheimer two movies huge movies by pretty big directors coming out on the same day. That's it. And I have now seen both of them. I know it's a bit late. Um, but I just got this lavalier. Don't ask why I'm using the karaoke microphone. It's because I like it. So screw off. So uh, yeah, funny story. This is actually now my second time recording this video because I recorded it and my microphone was, or my camera was like glitched and it wasn't recording any audio. None. So I recorded the whole thing and now I'm having to record it all over again. So that's just great. Anyways, guys, let's just get started with... Hey, that's pretty good. Starting with Barbie. This is the new Greta Gerwig, Gerwig, I don't remember how to pronounce it, her new movie. She's also the director of uh, 2017's Lady Bird, which was absolutely fantastic, as well as 2019's Little Women, which I still haven't seen, but I need to. And Barbie is good. That's it. Don't expect me to say this movie is great because it's not. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things I really do like about this movie. But there's also a lot of things I don't like about this movie. Let's start with the positives. For starters, the, the set design and the costumes are incredible. The way that the set design is so much like a Barbie world. It's so immersive. It's so fun. It's so vibrant. And I love watching the characters do their goofy shenanigans inside of this world. The costumes and the characters are also really interesting and fun and the performances are all around really great. Starring Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, America Ferreira, and also Kate McKinnon. And they all do a great job. Um, everyone's hyping up Ryan Gosling's performance though and I'm like, yeah, he was good, but why, why is he getting hyped up so much? I think he was much better in La La Land. I also think this movie was kind of funny. It wasn't very funny, but it was kind of funny. It made me chuckle a little bit, but not, nothing too special. The story was also just really fun to watch. I mean, it wasn't anything really special, and especially when we get into the messages, I have flaws, but the story is fun, I guess, watching these characters run around and learn things that are kind of stupid. So let's get into the messages that this movie is portraying, which is my biggest negative about the movie. This movie, for a while, is pretty much hating on men until the very end. And even women, too, for at a certain point. And I'm all for gender equality, and so when the movie, for a while, when Barbie and Ken go into the real world, the whole movie is like, oh yeah, men, they rule the world, they're slobs, they're sleaze bags. they are horrible people. That's kind of what I got, and maybe I'm just stupid but that's just what I felt about it so then it kind of paints a bad picture of us and I really didn't like it and even when we get back into the Barbie world the movie even starts painting bad pictures on women and how they treat men and it's just like what what are you trying to send here this is weird and then by the end it's all like oh yeah everyone's cool this movie yeah like we're hating on everybody at, throughout the entire movie and then all of a sudden bang it switches and now we're all chill I'm just like, what? No, you can't just hate on genders and then act like everything's okay in the matter of five minutes. Th th no. So the message really fell flat for me, especially in a Barbie movie that this that it looks like this movie would cater to kids. But the messages in this movie are not for kids. And it's not one of those movies that are like, oh yeah, this can be enjoyed as both a kids and adult movie. No, this is one of those movies that I feel like if you take your kid to see this, you're gonna have to have some really interesting conversations that you probably don't wanna have at their age. So yeah, this movie was good. It had a lot of elements that I did really enjoy, but all in all, the story and the messages just kind of fell flat for me. I still had a good time watching it. It was certainly entertaining throughout the whole thing. I never had a bad time. I was never bored, which was good. Also, I think all the musical numbers were really fun. The songs were good. It was just an all around good time. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm feeling a light to decent six on this one. 
Alrighty, we are now going to be talking about Christopher Nolan's most recent work, Oppenheimer. This is the true story of J. Robert Oppenheimer in his involvement in the making of the first atomic bomb during World War II, starring Killian Murphy, Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Emily Blunt. Everyone gives a stellar performance in this movie, particularly, obviously, Killian Murphy. I'm obviously going to be rooting for him to win Best Actor, and I know Leo might be really good in Killers of the Flower Moon, but I'm still probably going to be rooting for Killian just because I don't think he has enough recognition for how great of an actor he is, so I'm going to love to see him take that Oscar on stage, even though the Academy means mean nothing. This movie is incredible. Nolan has tendencies of sometimes focusing too much on the story and the concepts and the themes while not really taking a look into the characters and their depth. This movie balances the two things perfectly. This is an entire character piece movie. You guys know me. You guys know I love characters. Joker's one of my favorite movies of all time. That's character study. This movie is a huge character study, and yet you don't even know what side you're on. You could argue for hours if Oppenheimer was a good person or a bad person you could argue for so long and still not even come up with a definitive answer. And that's what I think is so interesting about this movie. And while also having this complex character in the center of it, and also having really in-depth characters around him, like Emily Blunt's character, like Robert Downey Jr.'s character, you also have this visually immersive, stunning piece of filmmaking that is so good to look at. Even though it's not something as grand as something like Interstellar or Inception, this movie is still absolutely gorgeous with every shot, the lighting, the framing, it's all perfectly done in my opinion. I will say the biggest critique that I see with this movie is it's boring and like, what are you watching? This movie is not boring in the slightest. I was never bored throughout the whole three hours. I will say I was not interested in some moments because this isn't my type of movie. I don't really like these true story war tales so the first 45 minutes i wasn't really invested yet but once you hit that hour mark it was pretty much smooth sailing from there i loved it this movie has heart it's deep dare i say it has layers i've not stopped thinking about this movie since i left the theater and i loved it so much the score is so grand it's great Every single time it plays, you just get so immersed into what's going on. However, I will say, I do have some critiques with the movie. For starters, I know this really isn't the fault of Nolan or even the movie. It's just there are so many people involved with this movie in terms of when it was, you know, taking time back in the 50s. So there are so many people, so many characters, so many names that when they start throwing these names out, you're like, wait, who was that again? And then you're like... And then like five minutes later, when they're already past the topic, you're like, oh, that's who it was. But now we're already on something else and that person's irrelevant now. So it, there's way too many people. So second watch would really do a lot for me, but I still found it not that hard to follow. But sometimes, yeah, it took me out the, with the confusion of who is who. And yeah, other than that first 45 minutes, which is another one of my critiques, I think this thing is incredible. The ending is perfect. Every character is like insanely well written. This thing is just all around one of the best movies of the year, if not the best movie of the year. We'll have to see when it comes down to December of 2023. Anyways, I had a blast with Oppenheimer. I think this is one of Nolan's best works. Spoiler alert, Nolan Ranked is gonna be coming out very, very soon, so keep your eye out for that. And yeah, I'm feeling a light to decent nine on this one transition if you guys have seen barbie and oppenheimer what did you think about it tell me in the comments down below and you know make sure to like and subscribe if you want and i really hope you guys have a great rest of your day evening or night or whenever you're watching this so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys next time bye